Hi, I'm Valley from Greenwood Solutions. Glasses, yep. Computer, yep. It's spreadsheet time again. Today's presentation, we're going to look at creating an AC isolator schedule for your commercial solar system. As I always say, documentation, documentation, documentation. At the end of this, you'll have the ability to create a spreadsheet to use on site as a document that will record what isolators are used and where they go. Hit that subscribe button and hope you enjoy. Thank you. So today we're gonna to create an inverter AC isolator schedule. This is a really important piece of documentation that can be used as a reference um, and as a working document on site. So effectively what I've done, and you know how slow I am at typing, so I blanked out all the rest of the information initially. I've created a, um, a little spreadsheet in Excel, and I use Excel for Mac, but you can use whatever spreadsheet, where you've got the inverter number, so which, how many inverters you're using, what number they are, the brand model, the inverter output in amps, the serial number, really important to record that, the AC isolator brand, the AC isolator current rating in amps, the AC isolator serial number, the cable type from inverter to AC isolator and the inverter to AC isolator distance in metres, all recorded. Okay, so let's go. First thing I'm gonna do is get back all that text. So let's go through this slowly. We are using, in this case, five inverters. Now the first one I've used is Fronius Simo 20, a Fronius Eco 25, another Eco 25, another 27, and a 27. So there's five inverters at all, in all. So the first thing is the output of the inverter. Now, you can go to the data sheet, and I probably suggest that you do, but in this particular case, I've created a, uh, a bit of a formula that automatically does that calculation for you. And you can see up here, what it does is it extracts the last two numbers and effectively does some playing around. And the calculation is, in this case, 20,000 watts divided by this 400 volts, which is the nominal voltage, because in this case we're talking about a commercial system. So 400 volts nominal, that's in Australia, New Zealand. It could be another figure in other countries. And we multiply that by the square root of three, because we're using three phase, and we come out with a figure of 28.87 amps. Now, the option here is to use this calculation up here, or you're inputting that figure straight from your data sheet. If that's the case, then you, you wouldn't use a formula here. The second thing is, is to record the inverter serial number. This is a real problem with a lot of sites, especially when you're using lots of inverters. All it takes is someone slipping up and not recording the inverter serial number or recording the serial number and, and not putting it in the correct file. And that serial number information should be used in the customer's documentation and in your own. In your own. Now the next one is in, in uh, AC Isolator brand, it really could be Acme. Let's say, let's make it Acme. Okay, Acme, I love Acme. Just brings back um, Roadrunner Day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that down and I'm going to paste special. I'm gonna just do the values in this situation. You can see values, so I just, so that'll just paste what's in that cell. It won't paste the formatting, etc. The formatting's okay. Okay, so we've got our Acme. Now, what I've done here is also use it in data validation. Enter selected, and I've spelled selected wrong, but anyway, brand of isolator or CB. I really go on a lot about documentation, and that's because I personally have learned the hard way. So, no matter how smart you think you are or how good your memory is, it's impossible to remember all these little things. And when someone asks you for that information, like, oh, what was the inverter serial number on that project three, three projects ago, and there was 10 inverters, what was the serial number on inverter number five, and you don't have that information on hand, it's not necessarily a good thing. So in this situation here, you can actually document all of those sort of things. 
So use this spreadsheet as you see fit, add to it, modify it, however you want to go. So, the next thing is the AC isolator current rating in amps. Now, I put a little reminder in to take into consideration the derating factor, and I've said the number must be equal or greater to 1.15. So in this case here, I'm putting in a, a 40 amp circuit breaker. Now I'll just jump across and go back to here. Let's say if I put 32. So you can see straight away, I've set a uh, restriction that I can't put in something that is less than 28.87 times 1.15. And in this case, you'd never put a 32 amp breaker in um, when you've got a output of your inverter of 28.87 amps. So I'm gonna do a retry and I'll go back and do 40. Okay, now let's have a look at a larger inverter. So we'll go down to a 27 kilowatt and it, Fronis Eco 27, 38 amps. I'll put in a 50, let's put a 40 and see what it does. No, it won't let me. Now, I think it's really important to remember the derating of isolators circuit breakers is a really important thing. It's incredible when you go to the manufacturer's website and see, ah, we rated our isolator based on this, you know, this fantasy land of, yeah, oh, it's perfect. The cable length is this, the isolator is, um, you know, unenclosed and it's a perfect temperature. When you start drilling down, you'll see straight away that the current carrying capacity of these, these products and, and cables are severely um, compromised when you start enclosing them and this, that and the other and ambient temperatures are more realistic. So, so just be really careful. So I'll do a retry on that and we'll go 50. Now the next thing is the AC isolated serial number. All serial numbers are important and the AC isolated serial number is no exception. For example, I'm old enough to have seen quite a few recalls of isolators and circuit breakers. So imagine if there was a recall for the particular brand of isolator that you use, in this case, Acme, and, you, and they're asking for the serial number and you don't have it, how are you gonna make a legitimate claim when you're returning it and get your money back? So, documentation, attention to detail, record the serial numbers, have the serial numbers documented in the same layout as your serial numbers for your inverter. In this case, the serial number here is 132 whatever it is, yeah. Now, cable type, this is up to you. Obviously, as an installer, you're designing what cable goes here. I put 16 mil XLPE. Now, I've done a little data validation thing saying, Make sure cable has correct current carrying capacity that exceeds capacity of circuit breaker isolator. And obviously very important, the inverter to AC isolator distance in meters. And this could play into your um, calculations for volt rise, which is required for any system over 30 kilowatts on the AC side. So obviously you can, you can modify this spreadsheet and if you're using 10 inverters then you drag down um, all these columns um, as far as you want to go just be aware you might have to do some adjustments so this can be used as a working document um, or as a document that goes into the customer's um, into the customer's manual or, ha or however you see fit hope you enjoyed that one uh, spreadsheets are great fun, aren't they? Yeah, all right, tongue in cheek, but they do really serve a purpose. Uh, really important to document everything that you do.